So Emma Vigland of Rebel Headquarters spoke to Beta O'Rourke and asked him a pretty straightforward question. And of course, he couldn't help himself. He gave a word salad answer. And I think this is one of the many reasons why he's stuck at 1% in the polls. A member of the audience asked you whether or not you support leveraging aid to Israel to end the Palestinian occupation. And you said that you uh, support leveraging our relationship with Israel. Yeah. To clarify, does that mean supporting leveraging the billions of dollars in aid that we provide to Israel? Yeah, I, I think it's every aspect of our relationship with Israel. It's every aspect of our relationship with the Palestinian Authority. Um, our, our goal should be, and it will be under my administration, to help produce a two-state solution. To help produce, because we should have the humility of understanding that we cannot dictate that or bring it to pass of our own accord, that we will need uh, negotiating partners who will operate in, in good faith uh, and, and work from some kind of common ground to produce the result that we described, the, the dignity of the people who live in that region, their ability to be uh, safe and secure in their homes and, and in their countries. And the United States has a very special relationship with Israel. The United States has an important relationship with the Palestinian Authority. And we should leverage those full relationships to make sure that we get that full result that I just described. And does that include the aid? The aid is part of that relationship. Okay. Thanks. I know he nominally gave the right answer there, but he didn't give the right answer. He's full of it. He 100% doesn't mean that. Because he tap danced around it. <laughs> that was the longest answer in human history for a very straightforward question. He said, um, uh, we need to leverage every aspect of our relationship with Israel and the Palestinian Authority to try to get to those ends. Hey, should we leverage our financial assistance to them in order to bring about a peaceful solution? And his response was, we should leverage every aspect of our relationship with Israel and the Palestinian Authority. He ain't gonna do Dickie McGee's axe, but it's okay because he's not gonna be president either. <laughs> but yeah, nominally he's given the right answer of, yeah, sure, we'll leverage the, uh, you know, financial stuff. But there's a reason why he talked around it massively. That's him trying to weasel his way out of it, wiggle out of it, not give a direct answer, be very vague, be very broad, use flowery language to try to really divert and op obfuscate and deflect. And that's what he did. So, and again, it's just it's a word of advice to Beto O'Rourke, even though I don't know why I'd give him advice, <laughs> because I don't agree with him. Um, you're basically doing the opposite of what you should do in today's era in terms of politics. Um... You got to give like quick, direct answers, man. Nobody's buying your 1990s nonsense of like talking around an answer and really tr trying to use 150 words when you could use 12. Nobody likes that anymore, man. It's a totally different po political era. And he's lost in the wilderness. But then again, everything he does is a an attempt at a strategy. And he always picks the wrong one. I mean, originally when he was running against Ted Cruz, he surged in the polls. Why? Because he was trying to be like Bernie. And then later on in the campaign, he pumped the brakes on that and tried to be more centrist, to be more serious. And that's when he started tailing off. So even when he does the right thing and he says the right thing, it's usually a strategy. And when he does the wrong thing and says the wrong thing, it's a strategy. But one thing that he just can't bring himself to stop doing is being a sleazy politician who talks way too much. Just give a direct answer. If I'm asked that question, hey, should we leverage our financial relationship with Israel? Here's my answer. Yes. <laughs> We're going to try to force there to be a solution, and there's no better way to do that than with dollars and cents. That's it. Very simple. Israel has universal health care. We don't have universal health care here. Maybe they should give money to us. Ever thought of that? <laughs> that's it man what are you doing uh, I think we should uh, leverage every aspect of our relationship with Israel and uh, the Palestinian Authority whoa, 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 whoa you were asked about Israel you brought up the Palestinian Authority you were asked about Israel uh, we, uh, I think we should leverage every aspect of our does that include the financial uh, our financial connection with them uh, yeah, yeah that's part of it I would uh, hmm. 
Come on, dude. So I'll ask you guys. My interpretation of this segment is he's trying to bullshit his way out of the question, and he's talking around it, trying to make it more vague on purpose, and then even when he answers yes because the financial relationship is part of it, he's still trying to like tap dance around it and soften it because he's not going to do it if he gets in office. So what do you think? Will Beto O'Rourke... Well, he's not going to be president, so I can't even ask this question. I'll just ask you what you think of the answer. Do you agree with my interpretation of it, that even though he nominally gave the right answer, it's nonsense because he tried to not give the right answer? Because that's my interpretation of it. Or do you think, shut up, Kyle, just give him credit on this one thing because he did nominally say the right thing, even though he said it in an insane number of words? I'll ask you guys. But just from my perspective, I'm not even close to buying it because it seemed like he was trying so hard to not give a direct answer because he knows he's not going to do that.